On a dark night, one can see a band of light across the entire sky. The ancients called this the Milky Way. What they didn't know is that we see this band because we are sitting inside a giant disk of gas and stars. If we looked from the outside at the Milky Way, we would see a giant spiral galaxy 100,000 light years across with a central bar and a very flat disk containing spiral arms. This system is surrounded by an even bigger galactic halo, which is mostly composed of dark matter and hence invisible to our eyes. We don't really know what the dark matter is, but it must be there because the stars are moving like they're interacting with something. We can see, smell, taste, and touch only about 5% of the material of the, the entire universe. Dark matter is part of the other 95%, and its interactions with us is so weak that even though it's flowing through us all the time, the only way we can detect it is by the small effect it has on the motions of the stars in our galaxy. Unfortunately, we don't have a spaceship that can fly out of the galaxy and see what it looks like from up there. So instead, we have to do the best we can from here on Earth. We send satellites up into space, we build huge observatories here on the surface of the planet, and we can do a pretty good job of matching, mapping the structure from the inside. But then we want to know not just where is the stuff, but how did it get there? So what we can do here is we can create a model like you see here in the movie. The great thing about a model is that we can change the way we can run it and run it lots of different times and see which one compares best with observations. What's so fantastic about these parts is that they are made of stars of very different ages and types. Just like persons in a photo album, we can see how they age. This tells us where stars come from and when they have born and hence allows us to reveal the history of the system. After the Big Bang, there was just very thin gas. However, some regions were denser than the others. Now there are two big players governing the picture, gravity and the conservation of angular momentum. By Newton's force of gravity, those denser regions will attract more matter from their surroundings while they compact themselves under their own weight. Conservation of angular momentum is what governs the motion of an ice dancer. When they pull their arms towards their body, they spin up, and similarly, the gas clumps will develop faster and faster rotation. Now gas particles repel each other. Just like it is difficult for a person to move against a crowd, a gas particle has to move with the general streaming motion of the gas. Hence, there can only be one rotational direction in the system, and it will settle into a giant disk. Our Milky Way is born, and from this disk, now the stars of our galaxy will form. In the past, astronomers believed that stars circle the galaxy on roughly the orbits on which they have been born. However, as we have seen, our disk has a spiral pattern. This spiral pattern is density waves, regions of higher density which can attract stars from the surrounding regions and grow in strength. Now those waves act just like the ocean waves on wave riders. If a wave rider sits just on the ocean, the wave will pass beneath them. However, if they match their speed to the wave, the wave will pick them up and without having any own effort, the wave rider will travel along the entire beach. Stars do the same. Most of them are partly affected by the spiral pattern. But some of them have the right speed and will be picked up by the pattern and hence can migrate through the entire galaxy. As we have observed, stars in the solar neighborhood have a very large variety of different qualities. And hence, by this process, we can explain those different stars as immigrants from other parts of the system. Since our sun is only one of billions in the universe, it's probably not unique. 
Here we see a movie of the model of a galaxy like our very own Milky Way forming. You can see the various pieces come together and create this disk at the middle of the galaxy. You can see it sort of forms from the inside out so that there's older material on the inside and younger material on the outside. And gradually the gas builds up and forms this nice big disk that looks very much like the Milky Way that we see today. We can take a step back from just our Milky Way and see where we lie in the context of the entire universe. As we zoom out, we see that the universe is organized into these filament, into this unique large-scale structure. There's filaments of material, and where the filaments connect, you can see that there's groups of galaxies.